Hey fit and healthy friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Holly of Renewal Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm training for a half marathon. So we're in a series of showing you that training so that you can learn some tips and nutrition information that might make your running a little bit better as well. So today is a 13.1 mile run. Yes, a half marathon as part of my half marathon training, which I will explain in this video. And I will also share with you how to properly fuel for your runs to stay energized and perform well. First off, I'll explain why I'm running a half marathon in order to train for my half marathon. So many training plans will take you to 12 miles or less. And then the 13th mile will be on your race day. And this works great if your goal is to just finish the race. My goal is to get a PR. So I'm doing the full 13 miles prior to the race because I want my body to get used to it. I want to know how it feels. I want to know what to expect. And largely, I want to practice my entire nutrition strategy beforehand to make sure that it works. So you don't have to do this. I'm a bit of a control freak. I really like to know what to expect. I was never a Girl Scout, but I definitely want to always be prepared. So my fueling strategy for this run was about 14 ounces of water, and that contained approximately 200 milligrams of sodium from electrolytes, one Ucan gel, and one sleeve of Cliff Blocks, totaling approximately 75 carbs. So how did I come up with this nutrition plan for myself? That's what I'm going to cover next, how to properly fuel your runs. Without adequate energy, primarily from carbs, you are more likely to slow down, feel more fatigued, and have worse recovery after your run or race. And consuming carbohydrates during a run has been shown in some cases to reduce things like GI permeability, which can sometimes contribute to certain GI symptoms. So what should you eat before a run? Prior to a run, you want to keep fat, protein, and fiber to a minimum. These are foods that slow down digestion and are more likely to contribute to GI distress. And when I talk about GI distress, I'm talking things like nausea, stomach cramps, and side stitches, vomiting, uh, need to go to the bathroom, diarrhea, belching, bloating, things along those lines. So you want to keep your pre-run meal very light, easy to digest, and high in carbohydrates. And try to consume a meal or a snack about one to two hours prior to your run so that you have time to digest it if possible. If this is an easy or shorter run, then the amount of food and the amount of carbohydrates isn't quite as important. So you just want to get something in to give you some energy. So some examples of this might be something like a slice of bread with some jam, half a cup of dry cereal, a banana with peanut butter, or you could even take a gel, like something that you would normally use during your runs. So in these shorter runs, anywhere from zero to about 30 grams of carbohydrate should be perfectly adequate. For longer runs that are gonna last over 60 minutes or might be something like high intensity intervals, then you're gonna need a little bit more fuel and up to 60 grams of carbohydrates. However, this will somewhat depend on how much carbohydrates you already have stored in your body to use and how much food your stomach can actually tolerate. So everyone's going to be a little bit different and you're going to have to find that sweet spot for yourself by testing it out. So for these types of runs that require more calories and more carbohydrates, you might have something like two pieces of bread with nut butter and some banana or a bagel with nut butter and some jam, a bowl of oatmeal, bobo snacks, which I have shown on previous videos, or any type of little snack bar like that that is healthy, low fiber and high carbohydrate. Or like I mentioned before, even a gel, if you're in a hurry and you have a high carbohydrate gel, that can work fine as well. However, as I said, personal nutrition needs for things like running is very individualized. So if you're struggling to find something that works for you, you might wanna consult with a registered dietitian like myself, or just do a lot of testing with different products, different amounts, and different types of runs. During your run, fueling is going to be very, very important. And the only source of nutrients that you really need is carbohydrates. So you really don't wanna be having protein or fat because carbs are gonna be your quick source of energy that can absorb quickly and help power you through your run or your race. So make sure that you test out different strategies to find what works for you, especially if you have a race coming up, try your nutrition strategy multiple times 
to make sure you're not going to have things like G issues on your race day and that you will have enough energy. For runs that last under 60 minutes, you're probably fine with just water or you could do something like a drink that has carbohydrates in it and you just do a mouth rinse of those carbohydrates. If this is a hard interval run, then you might want to consider consuming extra carbohydrates to power you through the workout and help with recovery. In this case, you may need anywhere from zero to 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour. However, keep in mind that hard interval or high intensity type of training is a little bit more likely to cause GI issues. So again, you'll kind of need to test and see what amount and what timing works best for you. Runs that last over 60 minutes are when nutrition becomes a lot more important. General rule of thumb is you need about 30 to 60 grams of carbs per hour. So if you had, let's say you ate carbohydrates yesterday and you had a pretty decent carbohydrate rich breakfast, then in the first hour of your run, 30 grams should be sufficient. Then after that, once you hit that one hour mark, you wanna shoot for up to 60 grams of carbohydrates. Again, this is going to be individualized and very per person. I know I'm saying that a lot, but that's just how it is. Some people may even be able to take up to 70, 80, 90 or more grams of carbs per hour, but that's really not necessary unless you're going really long runs or in your, you're in a long triathlon and you'll probably need to do some gut training to teach your stomach to be able to take on that much fuel without GI problems. So just do the best you can to take in as much fuel as you comfortably can and again, practice your race day strategies during training runs. Is this video helping you so far? If so, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss future videos. Now let's continue with how to get in all of those carbohydrates when you're running. Most people like to use gels or chews when they run because they're very easy to absorb you don't have to do a lot of digestion and breaking them down and they're just a lot of carbohydrates and sugar so it's quick energy for your body to use they're also very light and small so it's very easy to pack them into a running belt into a pocket so it's really easy to take multiples of these to give you the fuel you need however do know that there are so many brands out there and most of them have different ingredients some are going to work well for you and your digestion your gut health others not so much try testing out different brands and see what works best for you what if like me you don't necessarily love to eat during workouts i understand believe me but keep in mind that your intra run nutrition is also going to impact your recovery i used to feel very tired sometimes headachey or brain foggy fatigued after a long run when i wasn't eating enough when i started fueling my runs and bikes I felt so much better after the run and recovered better. So you may be done running, but your nutrition strategy is not. My first recommendation after your run is to drink water. You want to rehydrate after. This is crucial to recovery. So if you can, drink about 16 to 24 ounces per pound of body weight that was lost and add up to 500 milligram sodium to replace the sodium lost in sweat. Your post-workout meal will depend on the length, the time, and the intensity of the run, but generally speaking, you want high protein and high carbohydrates after your run to help repair your muscle and refill those glycogen stores in your body for energy and keep fat fairly minimum because it can slow down digestion and you want those other nutrients to get absorbed and into your muscles as fast as possible. Aim for at least 20 grams of protein. Generally speaking, the bigger you are, the more muscle you have, the more protein you're going to need. Tons and tons of protein isn't gonna give you much more benefit. A normal meal should work pretty well. So something like eggs and toast, a turkey sandwich, or chicken and rice with some veggies. Another option would be to have a post-workout protein shake. This is a really fast, easy way to get quick digesting protein into your body and buys you a little bit more time if you're not able to eat a meal right after your workout. So if you drove somewhere for your run or you wanna come home and shower and stretch and do all of those things first, then a quick protein shake is a great way to get in some of those nutrients. And then about 30 to 60 minutes later, you could have your full meal. So this is so far a really random run. <laughs> we have no idea where we're going. 
up and down hills. Our first mile was very, very slow. Lots of people out to work around. It's probably gonna be a very long uh, 13 miles, but it's pretty. We're doing some fun exploring. done you got a mile and a half to go and I think this is the first time I've ever taken all of my nutrition I hope these nutrition strategies were helpful for you and your future runs if they were please give this video a like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos also check out my website at renewalfitcoach.com where you can find free resources for nutrition and meal planning like an anti-inflammatory smoothie guide that's free to download if you need more personalized one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching, then I would love to speak with you. Feel free to book a 20-minute consult with me by using the link in the description, whether this is for something like running or fitness or something like weight loss or general health. I would love to help. Thank you for watching this video. And until the next one, blessings on your health, fitness, and running journeys.